what life lessons that you have gathered through your adventurous lives you would like to share with all the youngsters that are present with us over here today if you can please start with uday sir from being a journalist to a author and now the chief information commissioner of india please tell us about your journey I think uh, Kiran Bedi ji has uh, really spoken on this subject uh, at uh, very in great detail. But still, I would like to share a few things. Uh, since I draw inspiration from Vinayak Damodar Savarkar to a very great extent. from his nation first vision a lot of people talk about nation first but after having written a book on his uh, on his ideology on his thinking on savarkar the visionary the visionary of india's national security i think one thing which is we still we have to imbibe all of us is nation first in true sense what what it what it would mean for for all of us and for you students particularly it would mean that whenever you are taking a decision in your life it might be good for you but it not be it might not be good for the nation so you have to take from the nation's point of view nation first in that sense so my message is that nation first is an answer to all the ills of the country kiran beji spoke about uh uh swachh bharat uh how how we could make our uh, clean our, keep our roads clean you know i think if you go ahead with the nation first message if you imbibe that spirit then in whatever way you act whatever decision you have to take it will be it will ensure that that decision is not bad for the society bad for the nation i think uh, that is that is my um, uh, the experience of my life uh, i imbibed this message over a period of time i read savarkar in 1996 and thereafter i kept on reading about his ideology about his thinking about his views on nation about his views on india's national security and i have reached the conclusion that if you follow the nation first i today i am uh, 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 central information commissioner uh, which is the post of a judge in the central iti court i found this particular message from savarkar's life very very beneficial to me because it helps you to take the right decisions in your life decisions which will benefit you as well as the nation so my message for you would be i was just talking to kunal the kind of obscenity which is being uh, which is being uh, thrown out by uh, by uh, by ott platforms uh, by even uh, even facebook for that matter the kind of obscen the kind of Uh, uh, uh you know films uh, short films we see are you can't see them and no, nobody is willing to speak against it i mean when 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 certain clips are shown to you on the uh, 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 facebook you can't see them so we have to develop that spirit of nation first to be able to speak on issues which are very integral to the growth of this nation to the development of this nation and to our vision of mahan bharat and becoming a vishwaguru so i think nation first in true sense is the message i want to leave with the youth of this country and with this crowd great crowd which is before me thank you prakash uh, sir if we can have your views on the question which aditya just asked thank you kunal ji uh you know i must tell you this uh, 
at the opening itself that actors get noticed more than anybody else because we are on the screen and we get multiplied and amplified by media. So we may not have the wisdom to answer the questions that are posed to us. And sometimes we get uh, pushed up to positions where we can share the stage with somebody great like, you know, Dr. Bedi. Nevertheless, you know, from my limited understanding of everything, I will answer two questions uh, that I've asked myself and I've found answers to, which I want to share with possibly confused young people here. First is that I was really bothered about the idea of Indian democracy. See, listen to me, I'll tell you why I was bothered. See, in this country, see how voting happens in a multi-corner contest, you know, in many, in many constituencies of India, in every, every election, many parties are contesting. If there is 60% voting in a constituency, out of 100 people, 60 have voted. If uh, 31 people, 31 votes come to somebody, they can make the government. So what happens is people who are contesting elections typically try to build a caste community for themselves or they'll try to build a religious community for themselves as their base vote, which could be 10, 15 percent. And then they will ask, actually try to woo another 10 or 15 percent that can actually support them. So they make promises to them that are untenable, unviable, and sometimes, unfortunately, unethical to. You make those promises, and you win elections and you come to power. So in this country, you'll be, those of you who may not be paying attention to this idea of democracy is that never in the history of independent India, in a general election, any government has come to power with 50% vote share. This is a shame, you know. This is a terrible thing and it really bothered me. But what I found relief in is the idea is that we are not just a democracy by voting, we are a constitutional democracy. That these elected representatives are bound by the constitution, they're bound by the institutions that guide the functioning of government, including now the, you know, the, ele uh, the election commission, the information commission, the judiciary. And I want to give you a personal example of how I dealt with it. I was part of an agitation in Bangalore to prevent the building of an ugly structure in the middle of the city against the government. And one of the elected representatives in government in a panel discussion said to me, we have been elected, we have the mandate to do what we want. And I said, no, you have the mandate to do what we want, the voters, I said. That is lesson number one that I want to tell you that I discovered too late in, in life, I think, past 50, but I'm telling you now. The second thing is about myself, and I mean to all of you as yourselves too. And I answered this question to an interviewer earlier today. See, when we were growing up, I'm sure, you know, Dr. Bedi and uh, you know, Udaiji also un will see this, I don't know how you young people respond to this. See, if you did well in maths or science, then you thought you should go and become an engineer. This is what it was like, you know, and if you did well in biology, you go and apply for medicine. If you didn't do too well, you would, you know, take commerce. This is how it was for us. And I discovered that this question of saying, what is the scope that this particular career will give you? is actually a life sentence, you know. You just enter a tunnel and you just live there 
Because you've done that course, you get that job. And because you've got two years experience in that job, you want a promotion, you go to another job, which gives you a pay hike. But it's actually a life sentence. You have to serve something that you didn't understand at the beginning itself. And you thought that scope existed in, with that course. And you stay there. And when you're 60, you think you wanted to play the violin or something. It's not possible. I've understood that the question that young people must ask themselves now is this. What is the scope I am? What can I become? I'm a set of possibilities. What is the best thing that I can become is what we should ask and then choose the courses and subjects that we want to study to make that possible. That are, those are the life lessons that I can